Hello, ladies and gentlemen, you know who it is, Mr. Mark Antimate, the pontiff of Japanese whiskey, your Tokyo godfather here. Today's episode is going to be all about the old-fashioned cocktail, not just any old-fashioned, but this is the classic recipe from over 100 years ago. Before we go ahead and get into that, I would like to put in a quick plug for my books, because you guys knew it was coming. We have right here in hardcover format, The Ideal Bartender by Tom Bullock, the Centennial Edition, with additional writing from yours truly, as well as we have Julian's Recipes by Mr. Julian Anderson. This is also the Centennial Edition, with additional writings from yours truly, color photographs, commentary, all kinds of good stuff. This is like, this would be the equivalent to a blu-ray special edition of a movie you're not just getting the regular movie but you're getting all the behind the scenes and the making of of that movie included inside of these books so don't just go out there and just get the regular edition if it does not say centennial edition on the cover of either of these two books don't buy it these are the ones that you are looking for amazon.com make sure that you get it so today we're going to be pulling our recipe, the old fashioned, from here. Now, I believe the old fashioned is in both of these books, but it is a little bit different between both of the authors, how they make it. Considering that the books is only two years apart, everybody has their own special way to do something, but I'm trying to keep some consistency inside of uh, the next few videos that I'm going to make. So I'm only pulling it from one author the guy who whose drinks are more suitable for my palate they're both good authors they both make exceptional drinks but i would say just for my palate personally mr julian anderson meets my palate a little bit more so than mr tom bullock and he has the recipe for the manhattan inside of here which tom bullock does not include inside of his book so we're going to be talking about the old fashioned today. Next video is going to be the Manhattan and then we're going to have the the double header, the the verses so to speak. So, pulling my information from this one today. And I'm going to tell you guys how this is made really quickly. I have some information pulled up on my iPad uh from the book so I don't have to open that up and get it all sticky and things like that. I have all the ingredients right here in front of me. First, it says you need to take a whiskey tumbler and what you're going to put inside of it is a teaspoon of sugar and instead of a teaspoon of sugar I have these sugar cubes so all I had to do is just drop one of these inside of there and I mashed it up and muddled it up inside of some uh, pristine purified water not that the tap water is bad here in Tokyo Japan it is exceptional but you know I'm bougie like that so I like to have all my water purified. So I got some purified water inside of there. One tablespoon of water, which has muddled that, that sugar up and uh, diluted it. And then I put two drops, two, not drops, excuse me. I put two dashes of orange bitters. And I use this one right here. This is the most famous brand of bitters in the world, the Angus Tura. These are, this is Angus Tudor Orange Bitters. This is probably their second most popular product. They also have this one right here, the regular Angus Tudor Aromatic Bitters. And what do I want to say about this? Yeah, this is their most popular bitters, but the recipe, and specifically it says Orange Bitters, so I'm going to use this one. You see the, the contents of this one is 100 milliliters less than this, but... It's okay. We're not using this. I just picked this up just to show you. This is what the people, the bartenders of today are using. But going old school with that. After that is going to be one piece 
of lemon peel. I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but I already have that lemon peel sitting there inside of the glass that I cut from this. One or two pieces of ice, I went ahead and just thrown two inside of there. No particular reason why. I guess it depends on how cold, cold, cool you want it or how much you want your drink to be a little bit diluted so that it's not as harsh as it would normally be. There was just no reason. I just put two inside of there. And it is going to be one jigger of whiskey or gin. As we know in this day and age, if a majority of people that are going to be asking for an old fashioned cocktail are going to be asking for the whiskey variant, it is going to be very rare that somebody asks for gin, but just know that it is possible. It's, it's written here. So I went ahead and used Maker's Mark Stave Profile number 46 as my bourbon whiskey of choice to put inside of there. And like I said, I did one jigger, which is one full end of this big piece right here, 45 milliliters of whiskey all the way to the top. And I tipped that off inside of there. You stir it with a spoon, serve inside the same glass. You top off with a slice of pineapple, orange, and a cherry. I'm allergic to pineapple. And obviously in this day and age, it's not customary to put pineapple in there anymore. But yeah, I'm just allergic to it, so I'm not going to include it for that reason. But I did go ahead and put a orange slice inside of there, some orange peel. It's sticking up so I could pick it up with my hands. You guys could see quite a nice hefty size. So I got the orange, the lemon, and I got the cherry sitting inside of there. Let me wipe off that frost off the glass so you guys can see that. All the essential ingredients to make a very nice, uh, pristine, beautiful, old-fashioned cocktail. There are many ways to make this. Other mixologists is going to make it a different way, but I like to follow these old-school recipes. Considering that these guys are my brothers in time, from a long time ago, my ancestors, so to speak, I want to do things the way that they did it. So this is the way that they did it. Let's go ahead and have a sip of this real quick. Mmm. That's extremely delicious. I really like this one. And I want to refrain from comparing it to the Manhattan because I want to save that specifically for that centric video in which I'm going to pit these two head to head. So I don't want to tell which one I like more. But I do enjoy both drinks a, a great deal. And this one is very good to me. The reason I like this one is because it's smooth. It goes down very easy. It's light. And um, the part sum make it what it is. When you have a sip of this, mm, I just can't stop drinking. You can taste the individual components very easily you don't have to search for them it's not like you mix everything up uh on the real have them come together like voltron <laughs> and then you get deep like a navy seal no it's it's not like you mix everything up and it all comes together it's just you could taste the individual pieces i could taste the lemon in there the orange the bourbon whiskey I can taste that that new wood, mm. that American oak new wood, very nice. I can taste the, the orange bitters. This is a very prominent taste inside of there. I don't think I mentioned this. When I was saying that you need to put two dashes of orange bitters inside of here, what constitutes as a dash is you need to turn this thing upside down, obviously with the top off. I'm just not trying to put anything extra or get it all over the place. But a dash is you got to shake it uh, hard and you got to be generous with your pores. So a dash is one, two. You could put three dashes if you feel that two is not enough. Or if one of your dashes was not enough, then you can go ahead and shake it a third time. 
but that is a dash. You shake it hard and it's going to squirt out. Oh man, knocking over stuff here. So I do have some notes that I have written about this drink. I'm not necessarily sure if I'm going to read them straight out of the book because inside of my written review, I do kind of compare it against the Manhattan in some ways. And I, like I said, over and over, I kind of want to refrain from mentioning that. Uh, I just want to talk about the notes of this one in particular. What can I say? So let's skip over this. All right, here's something. I said, what the old fashioned has going for it is the pretty notable sugar and lemon zest. Yeah, that sugar is very prominent and so is the, and so is the lemon. It just makes for a very sweet drink. The whole reason that I like it is just that my palate gravitates towards sweet. You know, I may be living in Tokyo, Japan, but I am American born and raised and it's just what my palate is used to. I love sweet things. What can I say? I'm a sweet guy. But exceptional drink. Just absolutely lovely. I love the taste of those sugars inside of there. And even with the sugar, it has a very natural taste to it, which I like. And yeah, Julian is just going to have you winning with this. Uh, Maybe in a future episode, I suppose I could go ahead and make the old fashioned out of Tom's book as well. And I can pit these two head to head their old fashions against one another and tell you which one I like more because they are different if I haven't mentioned that earlier in the video but yes I tend to gravitate towards Julian's recipes a little bit more so there you have it all right I don't want to stretch this thing out so I would like to thank you all for watching today salute to you wherever you may be out in the world make sure that you guys drink responsibly and as always gentlemen and ladies you guys know what to do Keep it classy.